Welcome back everybody to lecture five, video five on the seasons. Now right now we are approaching what's known as the summer solstice, which comes up in about a, a few weeks from now, um, three and a half weeks from now, around June 21st, we have the summer solstice, the first day of summer. And season, summer, winter, fall, spring and so forth are astronomical in origin. Uh, we'll come to this picture in a minute, so over here, but first I want you to look at a uh, happy sun picture over here. And what we've got here is the Earth revolving around the sun. And of course, you know it takes a year for that to happen. And so at different dates of the year, the sun will be at different locations in its orbit. And here I picked out four auspicious dates. September 21st, December 21st, March 21st and June 21st. So we're right about here in our orbit. Okay, we're after March, we're coming up on June, June 21st. So we're about right there in our orbit. In just a few weeks, we'll be here at June 21st. Now, to have seasons, you have to have more than just a planet going around the sun. It could be, uh, as far as this picture here goes, uh, there's no indication that we'd have any seasons, not necessarily. Because what you have to have to have seasons, that is, you know, the changing of the weather, you know, the falling leaves, the blooming plants, the ice, you know, the hot sun. You need to have seasons for that. To have seasons, you have to have more than a planet going around the sun. That planet has to be tilted. Okay. Now Tilted relative to what? Right in space, what does that mean to have a tilt? Right? Because there's no down in space, there's no up in space. So what does it mean to have a tilt in space? Well, you can imagine this orbit happening, say, on a tabletop. You have the, the toy sun on a big table, and then you've got the Earth rolling around it. Okay? The plane of the table okay sort of defines the plane of the orbit of the earth right the earth orbits in a plane in a flat two-dimensional surface right it orbits around in a plane that plane is known as the ecliptic that is the plane in which the earth orbits right it doesn't move up and down you know as it goes around the sun like this it stays in a nice flat plane as it orbits. That plane is known lovingly in astroland as the ecliptic. Okay. And so the plane, what, what I've got here is, I want to ex explain this. The way I've got to kind of squashed this in, uh, along the this dimension. Because what we're looking at here is the orbit of the Earth. I mean, let's see how this comes off in the video. But tilted. A little bit. We're looking at it at a, with a, we're looking at it sort of at, at a three-quarter view. Okay, something like that. We're not looking at it face on. Not looking at it completely edge on. We're looking at it sort of at a small tilt like that. Okay, sort of like we're above the table but not looking straight down on it. Like we're sitting at the table watching the ball go around. The ball Earth go around the ball Sun, on the plane of the ecliptic, which is the tabletop. Okay, so that's what's happening here. The Earth's going around and around. That's why it looks sort of squashed like that because we're looking at it sort of, sort of three quarter view, not face on, not edge on. Okay. So when we say that the Earth is tilted, we mean that it's tilted relative to that tabletop. If this is the tabletop, I don't have a ball here with me, but the Earth's axis is not perpendicular to that tabletop. It's tilted just a little bit, about 23 degrees. So in this picture, the axis of the Earth's rotation is tilted like this. And it spins around that tilt. And that tilt remains in place as it goes around the sun like that. It doesn't swing around like this, point different directions. It stays up and to the right in my drawing as it goes around. It's like a top. The Earth is like a top, okay, that's spinning on its axis, but its axis is tilted a little bit. Okay? Relative to the table it's sitting on. Okay? And going around the sun on. It stays tilted the same way. It is that tilt which gives rise to the seasons. 
Okay, that tilt is what's responsible for the seasons. And the seasons come because over here in winter, you have short days, and on our Stellarium labs, we'll see how this works. You have short days and indirect sunlight. That is, the, uh, the sun is never very high in the sky in the winter. In the summer, it gets really high up, right? But in the winter, it stays kind of low on the horizon. So the indirect sunlight and the days are short. The sun rises late and goes down early. Right? We all know this from experience. Over here, in the summertime, we're approaching now the longest day of the year. Over here, we have long days. In fact, on June 21st, we have the longest day. And on December 21st, we have the shortest day. Also, we have direct sunlight. The sun is very high in the sky. Okay. And it's because of that tilt. Okay. The tilt of the, of the North Pole away from the sun in the winter means the sun stays low and that the sunlight is indirect. The tilt of the North Pole toward the sun in the summer means we have long days and direct sunlight. Okay. Now these four points have names. 1221 is known as the winter, and I picked the wrong winter solstice. Does that even show up? This pen is about to die. Yeah, that's good enough. Winter solstice. Okay. Over here on 621 is known as the summer. How about that noise too? Solstice. Does that show up? Yeah, it shows up. So 1221, the sun, the earth we say is at the winter solstice, and over here the earth is at the summer solstice. Okay. And then I'll use another pin here. 921, of course, is known as the vernal, the autumnal, or fall equinox. Equinox equal because we have equal length days and nights on September 21st. Up here, first day of spring, the vernal. Equinox. Again, equal length day and night. Winter solstice, shortest day of the year, longest night of the year, and direct sunlight. So it gets cold. The sun's up less time, and when it is up, it's less direct. In the summer, 621, the longest day of the year, the shortest night of the year, the sun is up longer, and when it is up, it's more direct, so we get more heat. And of course, all this is opposite for the southern hemisphere. December is the warmest time of year in December. I mean, de December is the longest day, shortest night in the Southern Hemisphere. June is the shortest uh, day, longest night. So the seasons are reversed in the Southern Hemisphere. Okay, so that's what, that's what creates um, the seasons. And this tilt from vertical is 23 Point five degrees, so 23 degrees uh, plus a little more. Okay, that tilt. So this is what's really happening, right? The Earth is going around the Sun, right? We all know this, right? Copernicus figured this out 450 years ago, right? So this is not a newsflash, but what it looks like from our point of view is something quite different, and that's what I want to do in this drawing here for the next couple of minutes. From our point of view, okay, from, 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 uh, from a distant point of view, the Earth goes around the Sun, but from our point of view, it looks as if the Sun goes around the Earth. And for thousands of years, they thought it did, because for all obvious purposes, it does. Here, it takes the Earth one year to go around the Sun. The ancients believed that it took the Sun one year to go around the Earth. Okay. And the path it takes there's a path that looks something like this. Let me pick a different color here. Maybe a green. 
the path it takes is something like this. I'm going to put this point here. A different circle. The angle here is 23. I don't know if I have room to write this here. Yeah, 23.5 degrees. So we have, remember this circle here is the celestial equator, the blue one. That's the celestial equator. The yellow line, and I, uh, those colors don't come out so well in the drawing, but the tilted yellow line here, and you can see this on a globe if you look, oftentimes. Tilted green line, rather. I should probably uh, actually make that dotted back, back in the back like this. Let me, let me redo this. I want this to be as clear as possible. It's not easy to do. If we had a planetarium, it'd be much easier to do. But we don't. So, no problem. Okay, so the celestial equator wraps around the back. So does this line wrap around the back. It's just tilted relative to the celestial equator. And that tilt is 23 and a half degrees. Okay, so we have two circles. So we have one circle, the celestial equator, and another circle tilted relative to it, 23.5 degrees. And from the Earth's point of view, the sun appears to crawl around this curve, this, this tilted circle, once per year. It's like having a, a track around, like being, being the center of a running track and watching the sun, a circular running track, and watching the sun run around you once per year. I should walk, crawl around you once per year. Okay, so the sun makes one takes one year to make one trip around this line here, and that line is also known as the ecliptic. So the ecliptic is two things: it's the plane of the Earth's orbit, but it's also that apparent path of the sun around the sky. Okay on the celestial equator. I mean, sorry, on the celestial sphere. Okay, so we ha now we have two circles, two big circles on the celestial sphere that are important. The celestial equator, which is what you get when you project the Earth's equator out onto the celestial sphere. But we also have this tilted circle known as the ecliptic. And throughout the course of a year, the sun appears to crawl around that circle. And the vernal equinox, this little lot point here that we talked about earlier, that's where the sun is on 321. First day of spring, the sun is there. When the sun is way over here, that's at 921. That is the autumnal equinox. The point way up here, 621, when it's high in the northern sky, that's the summer solstice, and down here the lowest point is 1221, the winter solstice. So we have four points. The sun makes one trip around the celestial, the, one trip around the ecliptic every year, and these four points are, these four points here are the same as those four points there. They're, they're in different locations on the pictures, but they're in the same order as the sun goes around it passes from the spring equinox to the summer solstice. We're right about right here. Sun's right about right there right now. It's coming up on the summer solstice. Remember, this is from the Earth's point of view. The sun seems to be going around us. We're really going around it, but it looks to us as if it's going around us because the Earth, to us, feels stationary. So the sun makes one big crawl around the sky once per year. All right. That's it for this one. Let's see. Uh, next next uh, topic up. Let me see. Anything else I want to say? Yeah, I think I'm going to uh, kill this video, stop this video, and pick up the next one uh, and say a few more words about this picture right here. Okay, there's a few more interesting things to say about this. I'm going to get rid of this one, and we'll pick back up uh, with the third video from uh, this day two.